and welcome to Let's Take a Look. In this video, we'll be touring the Chevrolet Volt. To get started, we'll go over some of the top questions that are often asked about this car. Since this vehicle isn't for everyone, we'll also go over some of the downsides of owning a Volt. Once we've gotten those out of the way, we'll talk about some of the advantages that this car brings. And finally, we'll take a hands-on look at the major features. For those who'd like a deeper look, stick around until the end for a bonus section, which includes a comparison with the Nissan LEAF. So then, top questions. Is the Volt a hybrid or strictly an EV? The answer is neither. Chevrolet technically classifies the Volt as a range extended electric vehicle, so it's capable of using both gas and electricity to power its drivetrain. But the reason why the Volt is not considered a hybrid is because it does not require you to use gas. It can be operated entirely by its electrical power sources alone, making it a special kind of EV. Second question How far can the car go? This can vary largely on several factors. On average, you can travel a total distance of 350 miles in the Volt. This distance is much further than any basic EV, such as the Nissan LEAF or common models produced by Tesla. Hence the special class, Range Extended Electric Vehicle. How many miles per gallon can you get with this car? Now this is complicated. Since the car does not always use gas, you can get a wide degree of measurements. That is, if your commute always falls within the electric range you could actually yield as much as 4,000 miles per gallon, and maybe more. As such, these cars have a special measurement known as MPGE. This measurement takes the equivalent of MPG and compares it to the usual costs of paying for gas. The Volt gets 95 MPGE. Do you need a special charger installed to charge the Volt? Answer, no. You can charge the Volt with any regular 120 volt outlet, Included with the Volt is a simple recharging kit that makes this possible, even on weaker circuits. But charging is slower than a 240 volt power source, which you could get installed in your place of residence. How does the car handle going uphill? Surprisingly well, and much like a diesel. Since the car offers a lot of torque, it is nothing at all like a golf cart. How does the Volt drive on the highway and on long trips? Though the car is optimized for speeds under 45 miles per hour, it performs perfectly well on the highway, especially when the sport mode option has been enabled. How does the car handle on snow, ice, and cold weather conditions? Though the car is not four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, the vehicle does have stability control and traction control to compensate for slippery conditions. The Volt is also a front-wheel drive vehicle, which helps with maneuvering the car. One downside when driving in cold weather is that the battery range can be temporarily reduced. This is because it's more difficult for batteries to perform in colder weather. Not forgetting, heating control can require more power, thus consuming further energy under colder weather conditions. On super cold days that have temperatures below 0 degrees Fahrenheit, the Volt will automatically turn on its engine to power the car. So in cold areas, you will have difficulty avoiding gas. But in terms of performance and safety, the Volt does rank on the higher end of the scale when compared to other compact sedans. This is thanks to the torque fueled by the battery power and the stability and traction control systems. Since the Volt has low suspension to improve its aerodynamic efficiency, driving on unplowed roads can be worse than other compact sedans. Thankfully, the weight of the battery helps maneuver the car in these situations, as well as enabling the sport mode option. How fast does the car go? For safety reasons, the car is programmatically topped out at 100 miles per hour. How soft does the car ride? The ride is much smoother than the average car. Given its custom-made aerodynamics for improving fuel efficiency, the car will coast like a bullet, especially when the combustion engine is not running. The only noise you will hear is the wind blowing against the car and the tires rolling on the road. How much does it cost? Though the Volt is more expensive than other cars in its class, the price keeps decreasing each year. On average, the Volt can run anywhere between 35 and 45K, depending on the options that you get with the car. Some dealerships will offer online discounts for the Volt as well as special financing. Additionally, there is the EV tax credit for which the Volt fully qualifies on the $7,500 amount. The car may also be leased, which may be a better option for this type of vehicle. How safe is the car? Safety ratings for the Volt are excellent. Essentially, all reviews for the vehicle rank safety on the higher end of the spectrum. 
how roomy is the trunk space. The actual trunk itself is smaller than the average car, but the Volt is really a hatchback, and the seats fold down in the rear, giving you the ability to haul items larger than usual. How much maintenance does the car need? If you primarily run on electric and avoid the combustion engine, the maintenance will be far lower than your average car. This is because there would be fewer moving parts that would require servicing. The oil is able to last years if the engine is used rarely, leaving just the standard fluids. The car will keep track and tell you how often the oil and tire pressure need to be adjusted, which are also important to maintain for maximum efficiency of the car. Next section. Since the Volt isn't for everyone, let's go over some of the drawbacks of owning a car like this. People who live in an apartment complex may have some difficulty recharging the vehicle and taking full advantage of its electrical benefits. Unlike standard EVs though, the Volt still gives you the option of using gas. So with that being said, you are not required to constantly recharge the Volt. Also, if you live in an area that is heavily populated with public recharging stations, this may not be an issue. People with large families may prefer a larger vehicle, since the Volt can only seat four people. For one or two small children, this may not be an issue though, and the vehicle is perfectly capable of supporting baby seats for toddlers. Since the Volt operates on some of the latest technology, the car can have a bit of a learning curve to it. Even something as simple as filling up the gas is slightly different from your regular car. Therefore, this may not be the ideal vehicle for somebody who wants something familiar. The technology in the Volt is relatively new compared to gasoline-powered cars. So along with that comes some risks, as with any other new technology that you deal with. However, most of the concepts in the Volt were carried forward from the EV1, which was also produced by General Motors in the early 1990s. So it's not like the technology is entirely untested, but it is new. The legroom in the back of the Volt is a bit tight compared to other cars. If you frequently haul around four tall adults, then owning a Volt may be problematic for you. Folks who live in colder climates will have difficulty taking advantage of the electrical benefits of the Volt, especially in areas that commonly have temperatures below zero. In these cases, the Volt forces the engine to turn on. This is because super cold weather prevents the battery from operating at its full potential. The Volt contains a lot of proprietary technology that is specific to Chevrolet. Even the rims and tires for the Volt are special made for improving aerodynamic efficiency. Therefore, getting repairs can be done only by Chevrolet or approved repair shops. To minimize the weight of the vehicle, the Volt does not include a spare tire. Instead, the car comes with a tire repair kit, which in some cases is easier than replacing an actual tire. One downside though is that the kit may not always be sufficient for fixing a damaged tire, in which case you will need to resort to roadside assistance. Luckily, the Volt does include this with its three-year free membership with OnStar. Lastly, in the event that the battery in the Volt becomes inoperable, it is not yet known how much the replacement battery would cost. This could be risky for people who would want to own the Volt longer than 8 years, since the car does come with an 8 year warranty on the battery. Now that we've covered the downsides, let's take a look at some of the major advantages of owning the Volt. The car uses some of the latest technologies that are found in vehicles today. You do feel like you're in the future with this car. The Volt includes features that are normally only found in higher-end cars. This includes features like Bluetooth support for performing hands-free calling, GPS, built-in garage door openers, and a hard drive for storing your music. The Volt was designed and engineered in America. Therefore, purchasing the car supports an American company. Even though the Volt is capable of being powered by petroleum, you still have the option of avoiding gas. In the event that you use both gas and electricity, you will still largely minimize or eliminate trips to the gas station. And when having to use gas, rest be assured, the Volt still gets great gas mileage that would trump any compact sedan, achieving on average between 35 and 50 miles per gallon. In almost all cases, the increased amount on your power bill will be far cheaper than what you pay for gas on a monthly basis. Though the trunk space is relatively small, the back seats fold down, allowing you to haul items that normally would not fit in a compact sedan. The car largely reduces or eliminates carbon emissions depending on how much gas you end up using. Now that we've covered some of the facts about this car, let's take a hands-on look at some of its features. One critical feature of the Volt is the regenerative braking system. The most obvious example of this is whenever brakes are used to slow down the vehicle. Even when the car is coasting and energy isn't being applied by way of the gas pedal, the Voltec drivetrain system will attempt to collect the excess kinetic energy. This is demonstrated on the efficiency panels. 
Folks who master this system can extend the electrical range of their commute by a considerable amount. For example, an average driver on a day with typical temperatures may only get 34 miles from the battery, whereas a driver who masters the regenerative charging of the Voltex system can get up to 50 miles with the electric range. Like most newer cars, the Volt allows you to control the climate from the infotainment panel. An eco setting is available, which optimizes the amount of energy the climate control system consumes. This setting is helpful for people who would like to extend the electrical range of their commute. Many of the common functions, such as fan and temperature control, can still be tweaked from the panel below. You can closely monitor your energy usage and how efficiently you're driving in a couple of different ways. The control panel provides two different screens, one for monitoring energy usage and one for monitoring efficiency. The charging screen helps you estimate how long it would take to recharge your battery based on how empty it is and the voltage that is being used to supply energy. The Volt includes a GPS system that features turn-by-turn -turn navigation, points of interest, and traffic information. The Volt has a built-in hard drive for ripping and storing your own library of music. Alternatively, you can plug in a USB thumb drive and play music from it directly, or copy up new music to the hard drive. CD and DVD audio is also supported, and DVD video can also be played back in the car when it is not in motion. Like most new cars, the Volt includes AM, FM, and XM radio. The Volt's unique shape can make areas you would normally expect to see hard to maneuver, so the car offers a camera and guidance systems for backing up. The car also has proximity sensors in both the front and back of the vehicle to help position the Volt safely while parking. For the final section, let's take a look at how the Volt compares to another popular EV, the Nissan LEAF. The LEAF is lighter in weight than the Volt, therefore it is a little bit more efficient on energy when commuting short distances. On the other hand, the Volt is generally more efficient when traveling long distances. The Leaf has considerably more leg and headroom in the back of the car. The car can also seat up to five people, where the Volt can only seat four. This makes the Leaf a better option for drivers who haul around more passengers. The power connector for the Leaf is positioned in the center of the car, while the Volt has placed it on the left-hand side. At first, this may seem like a cosmetic difference, but having the connector in the middle of the car can make the plug more accessible. Then again, if your outlet is located by the left side of the car, the Volt would be closer anyway. The LEAF features a design that stands out as an electric vehicle. The Volt, on the other hand, looks closer to a conventional automobile. The LEAF is generally priced cheaper than the Volt, which might be a better option for people trying to save as much money as possible. Of course, the LEAF is all electric, but along with this comes a relatively short driving range, at least when compared to the Volt's 350 miles. The LEAF can only average 95 miles. Another downside is that the LEAF's battery performance is known to be unpredictable in extremely cold weather conditions. This makes the Volt more reliable in these scenarios. In the worst cases, the Volt is able to fall back to its combustion engine. People who have short commutes and live in consistently warm areas may prefer to make the full switch to electric. But the Volt performs much better in cold weather conditions because of its weight, stability control system, and ability to fall back on gas. The Volt is a friendlier option to people who live in an apartment complex, which commonly do not have recharging stations. Well, that wraps up today's look at the Chevrolet Volt. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to check out some other videos. Thanks for watching.